All right. Once again, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Beta make them. It's Islam. Islam. Wonderful. Wow. Islam. As we you know, begin this journey, this long journey, you know, to reversion to sovereignty, you know, to regaining political recognition as we once were and then the family of nations, reversion to sovereignty. You know, welcome everyone. The Moorish and Pure Restoration Caucus welcomes you to our weekly meetings. I guess we'll probably, you know, we'll data for the next couple of weeks and then we'll maybe um, every other week, but to our, our educational uh, preparatorial Moorish Provincial uh, classes. I want to have everyone introduce themselves. Uh, body have the body politics and study groups and to introduce themselves. All right, uh, open up your mics and introduce yourself. Islam. Uh -huh. I'm Jamil Malik Bay here at the Khalifa Territory. Uh, here with the Great Seal. Uh, you know what I'm saying? One is a student of Taj Tariq Bay. Uh, we were trying to establish the Great Seal Order here at the Khalifa Territory. All right. Khalifa uh, Territory. All right. We're going to Akira Bay. We're in the Colorado Territory, and we're establishing a group here as well. Well, we have one established as well. All right. Wow. Islam, Yashu Hill, Ohio Territory. All right. I'll tell you anyone, just jump on right on in. Islam Angel Bay in the building, representing upstate New York territory, Lenape Hawkins. Islam Sharon Morris Bay, Michigan territory. Yeah, my shit probably cold now, man. Islam, um, I, I didn't hear you, brother. Arthur Trigg, New Jersey Territory. All right, Islam. Did you hear me, Shem? I'm Abdullah? Yes. This is um, Tazarna Akira Bay. Did you hear mine? Tazarna Akira Bay in the Colorado yes, Territory. Islam, Islam. Islam, Drew Shabir Bay, uh, Pittsburgh Territory. Islam, Sekhmet Bay. North Carolina Territory. Islam, Elio Boikyo Chogan, Florida Territory. Islam, El Issa Bay, New Jersey Territory. Hey, we Islam, Dino Mendoza. Mute your mic if you're not speaking. If you're not speaking, mute your mic. Islam, Dino and Gail Mendoza Bay, Morris Rose Study Group in the Arizona Territory. Islam Michelle Austin Bay, Virginia Territory. Shelly Bay, Florida Territory. Dawood Bilal Ibn Yusuf Abdullah Bay, Swamp Pomek Territory, x Westchester County, New York, Islam. Um. Anymore? I guess I'll go. Uh, Worship Imperial Restoration Caucus, uh, Terrence Bay here. Islam. Islam. Did you hear me? Shavenu Bay, Florida Territory. Islam. Nicola Lee, Kusar Il, Bronx Territory. Islam. Islam. All right, Yahudi Bay. Alagui Territory, Northwest. Islam. Islam. Gabonde Wase Bay. Elodium Moors Pradium Ante, Colorado. Islam. And we're all here. Islam. Daoud Abibel, Elodium Moors Pradium Monte, Colorado. Islam. Islam. Ooh. 
It's um, Teresa uh, just um, navigating a conveyance, so I can't really chime in. But Teresa, Colorado, formerly oh. Northwest of Mexico. Shaka Mexico. Hey, Tommy. Anyone else? Grand Rosano, uh, Dr. Ashra Hale Bay. I apologize for the noise. I just left USF. Uh, Tampa, uh, jurisdiction, Florida. Long. Is Carl, it? Omar, QL. South Con Raw, Florida Territory. Long. Carl, Omar, QL, Kansas City, Territory. Islam. Islam. Miguel Samuel Williams Hill, Manahatta Territory, student of Raji Bay. Islam. Anyone else? Good day there, Abdullah. This is Chief Noble Bay calling from Indiana, Morocco. Good day to everybody. Good day, Islam. Anyone else? Brian DeMar Bay, Michigan Territory, Republic. Islam. TJL, <clears throat> Michigan Territory. Islam. Islam. All right. All right. Anyone else? Shakir Bay, uh, New Jersey Territory. Islam. Anyone else? Would everyone to be acknowledged? All the body politics study groups to be acknowledged. Anyone else? Tupac Bay, Khalifa. Islam. Miami, West Papa. We speak up, please. Speak up. Illustrious Joaquin Bay. Islam. Miami, West Papa. Basara El. Territory. Islam. Brother Dula, in the chat, you have Pinchaw Wood Il in Tejas Territory uh, having mic issues. Islam. You also have El, El Haj Malik Bay. He's at work, but he's coming from the Chicago territory and he is listening in. Islam. Tariq is in the South Carolina um, territory. All right, Islam. Someone else? Islam, Darlene. He's at L from Richmond, Virginia territory. Islam. Islam. Vernon E. Watson Bay. Khalifa. Islam. Uh, this is Sharon Morris Bay, Michigan. I'm not sure if I was heard. Islam. Islam. All right. That's it. Now I'm here. This is Sister Denise L. Charlotte, North Carolina. Islam. <laughs> Islam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we can call. All right. So we have everyone. Everyone. So we're gonna call the order. All right. Call the uh, national order. Islam, everyone. Welcome to our first kickoff of the Moorish Body Politic Formation. And as we go ahead and get started, um, we have our new shirts so the body politics came in today so we just thought it'd be fitting if we wore those today and we'd like to welcome all the body politics that are on the line and we're going to open up with the prayer of the wampum seven of the iroquois hedonassi confederate constitution 
and it reads, it offered thanks to the earth where humanity dwell, to the streams of water, the pools, the streams and lakes, to the maize, next slide, Shem, and the fruits, to the municipal herbs and the trees, and to the forest for their usefulness, to the animals that serve as food and give their pelts for clothing, to the great winds and the lesser winds, to the thunderers, to the sun, the mighty warrior, to the moon, to the messengers of the creator who revealed themselves, who revealed his wishes and to the great creator who dwells in the heavens above and who gives all the things useful to men and who is the source and the ruler of health and life. Next slide, Shem. Okay, now, all right, there we go. Now you're moving, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Mausolees Rules of Order. We're going to have some order on this line as we go forward. Online, next slide. No recording online. We will have a recording. It will be shared. Keep going. It will be shared. Um, we're creating a OneNote for all the body politics. You will receive a link to that. Everything will go into the OneNote. Um, Zoom, keep your mic muted during the meeting until your selected time to speak. During, we're going to open up for all the body politics to have the Q&A time and answers and dialogue one to another regarding your body politics, where you, where you are in your formation and things of that nature. Hold all questions. Um, select the raise hand button. There is a raise hand button on your Zoom. Raise your hand as we get to that sex, that part. We will lower your mic, um, um, announce your name, and then you'll be, you'll be able to speak on behalf of your body politic or either your individual group, study group that you have formed. Um, five minutes or less per question. Minimum communication in the chat to allow for participants to focus on the presentation. All right, the meaning of the seal. The Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus on behalf of United Republic of Morocco, which is a, um, a motion once the parliament, next slide, Shem, once with a motion once the um, parliament is in or seated. The seal symbolized the Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus's national call and the facilitation for national political unity, reversion to sovereignty, and the, Moor and the restoration of our Moorish government. What is a caucus? And a caucus is an Algonquin word for caucasia, mean counselor, elder, advisor. And we have a defined strategy, tactic, motion, and mission. When was the caucus formed? The caucus was formed in June of 2019 with 52 Moors. The body politics was formed in the Lenny Lenape territory, which is the political jurisdiction of what is known now is called Wilmington, Delaware. Now for the remaining of the year, bi-monthly meetings was constructed with facilitating the uniting of various Moorish provincial body politics into a central governing Moorish parliamentary council. In December of 2019, the Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus on behalf of United Republic of Morocco secured her initial temporary location for interim headquarters. As challenges of obligations presented itself when forming a body politics, so if your body politics started as 24, 36, 50, and it's dwindled down, those challenges present themselves. But as it stands, you have 19 committed more is that continues the foundational framework of the restoration of gathering our various Morris body politics together. Why the caucus was formed is to address the 400 years of old European occupation issue of our Moorish land and the usurpation of our Moorish sovereignty by developing a, strat a strategic plan based on our Moorish nationality claim and sound jurisprudence to facilitate the national political unity of our people in a central governing body with open, with free open elections and a national constitution through a Moorish conventional constitution. Whereas the Moors have been indoctrinated into falsely believing that they are part and parcel, partial of the United States of America and therefore can use the United States constitution for their protection, which surrenders our treaty protection. Current members, 
I'm gonna give a roll call. Shem Malachi Bay, in-house. Abdullah El Tali Mosey Bay, in-house. Tamara Denise L, myself, Secretary Treasurer. Pakola Lee Kusar L, online moderator. Basara Denise L, online moderator. Darlene Yvette L, online moderator. Terrence L Bay, online moderator. Ahmad L, online moderator. Wayne Brower Bay, online moderator. Abdul Hakeem Miles Bay, online moderator. Vernon Watson Bay, online moderator. Illustrious Jaquim Bay, online moderator. Mustafa Saladin Bay, online moderator. DuPont Noble Bay, online moderator. Abdullah Sadiqi El Karin L. Ben Vance Brande, online moderator. James Weeks Bay, online moderator. Makara L, online moderator. Anthony Schenkel Bay, online moderator. Now, the strategy of the Merchant I'm on the Zoom call. Caucus is simple. It's for the restoration of the Moorish government for the realignment with the family of nations and the government to government relations. Now the tactic is to direct the facilitation of the Moorish provincial body politics into one central grand governing body. And our motion and our mission is the central grand government name of United Republic of Morocco, grand, the central grand government seal and meaning, the central grand government seat, the Lenin Lenape territory pursued into the 1778 treaty, the restoration of international re recognition. Okay, here's something okay, hold cool. On, hold on one second, hold now, on one second. Mute their mic. Uh, mute your mic. Could you mute your mic, mute your mic, please? Mic. Parliamentary okay. rules, mute your mics, please. We are in session. Now this is very important when you're having your meetings to make sure that you uh, are uh, adherent to the speaker that is speaking, even in your meetings, and um, to formulate the same process of parliamentary rules. If not, it'll just be chaotic. Everybody will just be speaking over one another. One thing, um, stay in the name, just, just saying Islam does not excuse one to just jump in and start talking. There's parliamentary rules that one put in place in their body politics to be able to take the floor when it's time to speak. So we, we are um, showing and demonstrating that process as of today. Now, the Moorish Parliament seats are empty. This is, this is the plan to restore the Grand Council, which is the House, the lower house. And this is the section um, of the chief statesmen chosen every second year by the Moorish people of several Moorish provincial body politics. And the electors in each Moorish provincial shall have the qualifications requisite. Now, this is a proposal adopt, uh, adoption from the head of Nazi Iroquois Confederacy. As you can see, all the seats are empty, so the Moorish, body, Moorish Imperial Divan is not up and running. We have not claimed to be the government. As we stated, we are the Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus. House of Elders, Upper House, which is, you know, in, um, in current government political jurisdiction of the United States is called the, the Senate. Now, the chiefs are chosen by the women. Now, this is, old, this is antiquity form of, of, of naming an elder, an elder knowledge and wisdom of a, a, a house, the Lord. The chiefs are chosen by the wisdom, women and hold a position as long as they serve faithfully. Each has an equal voice, but decisions are formed by consensus. Now, this is a proposed adoption from the, from the Hadanasi Iroquois Confederacy. As you can see, the, uh, as we stated just seconds ago, the Moorish Imperial uh, Restoration Caucus, these are proposal, missions, and tactic. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring um, um, Shem Malachi Bay up, who will go over the timeline of events um, regarding the Moorish body politics. So Brother Shem, if you wanna go ahead and come on up, you can go to the next slide. And Brother Shem is gonna go up and go over the seven steps, which is which um, th these seven steps that he's gonna go over are on the website of United Republic Morocco.com is it's on this page called Timelines of Events. So not only he's gonna go into why the timelines of event um, is there, but to help the body politics facilitate the importance of 
helping to go through those steps so we can get to the point of restoring our Moorish Imperial Divan. So thank you, and Shem Malachi Bay. Thank you, thank you. Ms. Testing, one, two, three, yes. Yes, excuse me, get my glasses. Thank you for your patience and time. This is very important. This is monument, and we don't want to let nothing slip. I mean, let our eye and our, our eye and our ears, not the eye, just to see the mental. We have to take in the mental, like the professor said, you have to be here in your mental mind. Um, the grand opening. I don't see the full thing. Oh, okay, she got it here. Okay. The grand opening. You have to uh, go up a little bit, scroll up a little bit, so I can read the whole thing. Yes, yeah, because it's not the whole thing is not here. The whole presentation PowerPoint is not here. What I'm going to do, Morris, is I'm going to explain as I go along the seven steps. I'm going to read them but I'm also going to explain because we have a misunderstanding. The last time we formed the first meeting, there was some people intimidated and offended. Not that we did anything wrong, but what it is a lack of information and knowledge because a, a lot of them are operating from ecclesiastic structure. And there's a difference in ecclesiastic structure and the social trust. It's a totally different thing. So I'm going to tie in for the brothers that consider themselves elders or the eldest operating from ecclesiastic organization, and then I'm going to show you the difference with a social trust, so we could so we will have no conflict. I don't want that. You can you can ascend and sign a treaty from your your ecclesiastic government. Okay, you ready, Tamara? You can lift it up whenever you're ready. All right. The, I can see I don't see the whole thing when I read it. I won't be able to see the whole thing. Like when you read it, it cuts off. Yeah. Right, it needs it need to be lifted up. Because it's not on it's not on it's not on a paper. It's for me to read the whole thing. It's like cut off. Oh, you can you got a big there you go. There we go. There we go. I need step one. It's a little over too far. Okay, thank you, Tamara. <laughs> okay, grand opening. The United Rest Publica of Morocco is the assembly vehicle used to navigate the various Moors body politics states into one international political central body, restoring our Moors imperial government structure and therefore possessing ourselves political, politically to function the sovereign power and control by the Moorish, Moroccan Moorish emperors. Now, in order for me to bring you, to let you know how we got here, there have to have been something done before to get us to this. That means somebody was worked. They put in works. Without your works, you're dead. And everything is dead. So in order to get us where we at now, there was some works. Let me explain what the works was. Since everybody think that, you know, when you invite somebody, grand opening, when you invite somebody to something that somebody put in the labor and you come and just reap the benefits, what are you mad about? What are you mad about? The work is done. Now, I got this, now there's a problem. One is not knowing. The other one is the ability to understand, understand, have knowledge and wisdom of what's going on. The next one is, I already got a government. What do you have? Do you have ecclesiastic government or do you have a social trust, which is a constitution charter put together by people collectively living among themselves to embody their rights, to embody the language to protect that right. 
as someone living in that land of the blood pedigree and also protecting, coming, banding together to protect the rights of private ecclesiastic governments that have a right to, to have political, civic, and economic affairs among themselves in that land living among others that's not a part of that ecclesiastic society. So as you can see, there's two govern types of government going on here. You can ascend with us as ecclesiastic organization, government. You're signing and you're going to send the head of the ecclesiastic government to represent your position in the court, in the period of parliament council. You preserve your sovereignty. Now, I'm going to read something. Please pay attention to this. To add on to the grand opening, because this is, this is, this is, besides all this, that is important right there. Because see, we have a problem and, you know, the sister's under fire for nothing, Abdullah, me, and the caucus. Let me explain so Why we have a power, power to create a council and caucus. What a caucus is our caucus and council. Would give us the right to create the caucus. And because we have the knowledge that we come from a house in a community of different areas in the province of Morocco. And there's no government. There's nothing to protect us. So we band together as groups under ecclesiastical order to form our society. When we formed it, we formed a constitution because our, we ourselves have to endorse that treaty. That's legitimacy. You cannot tell the people that see the danger of the people in a motherland being auctioned off as surety and death certificates. That they don't have a right to do something to help their people. Nobody gives, nobody can take that right from no group of people. Show me your works. We got works. The grand opening, in order to get to this, right here, there had to be some work done. Had to be some work done. So we don't want to go into any challenge among ourselves. Just to sin with us to the world body. Send your representatives up there. You got your constitution? What are you offended about? Do something. Don't complain. And don't have too much. Don't be stiff neck and hard headed. This fit in with the flow of balance. Ain't nobody taking nothing away from somebody. We're trying to straighten this situation out. We in a crisis, man. We get ready to get out of here. On this side of the world, a woman that's a rich herbalist in biology said, I moved to Korea. Why do you move there? Because the Korean presence, I would never bring nothing to death my people. Ain't nobody in Korea suffer from this. We don't have time to play around. There was a work done by people who did not receive any compensation, didn't care about it, sacrificed their body and their time to work in the vineyard, which would be working in a motherland, to resurrect the people out of dead state so they could come back and form a population and be recognized as a people, not a subject or a surety. Got to do this. I didn't waste my time. I met Professor. Ed. I met this man back in 2005 or six. Man opened my eyes. That world I was living in was a fraud, a fiction. And I was operating just like that fiction. So I humble myself and say, listen, I don't, I, I, I don't know this. This man opened a door in my mind. Come on now. Wow, what, what the, what's, what's going on? This, in other words, you know what he did? To, to reality and culture, I was dead. That's why I say he pulled me out of a freezer. Now I'm going to get back to the grand opening because these seven, okay. 
The Moors of different provinces, regions, and the territory of Morocco as a people need to have form among them, live, for form among them living in the, in the many geographical areas of Morocco. House, houses, communities of a population of people coming together to voice their opinions and vote among themselves certain men and women of that society to be a representative of her created council caucus to bring together other Moorish people to join together as a Moorish population or people to form a vessel body ve vehicle, to form a vessel body vehicle that will enable us to transition from being called residents, nationals of a, of a nation's that no, that's not our motherland. Now, see, this is the problem. We, they, they're teaching us, our, we, we, the, the United West Republic of Morocco, under the council, which is formed from a society, is taking us from being, claiming to be a subject or a refugee or so-called citizen of a foreign political jurisdiction or from a foreign territory domicile of the earth that's not our ancestors have not claimed as they lowly entitled as the landlords. That's not going to work. Next. We the Moors collectively need to form a form a name for the national government that our, that our own officials representatives and officers that's elected by the Moors population of people Moors government to enter and to interact and have a diplomatic relationship on pre-existing treaties, acts, and agreements to reclaim and be recognized by the high contracting parties, the European nations, that enter into Moorish treaties, which allow them, European nations, authority to establish a political jurisdiction in Morocco. Now, I'm going to go to the census. I hope that... I was some help to you in dealing with the grand opening. The reason why we sacrifice and we love, I go to the, the censor. The Moroccan Moor censor is established establishment of a census. The Moors, the Moors, the Moroccan Moor censor census is the establishment of a Moors permanent population for the restoration of the Moors and the Moroccan and Moors government. Whereas the United States censor is the, is the maintaining of a permanent population which has been taking the aboriginal native and indigenous wars from their sovereign jurisdiction of Morocco since 1790 and pleading and, pl and pledging them as collateral for funding from the international community, loans, and future from other nations. Now, I wrote something on that. This is what they're doing. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We the populate, we the most population of people of our own independent governments need to count the most people that are nationals, citizens of a bracket, listed on a roll or listed in the registry that's living in the province of the nation reclaiming the possession of the land territory in Morocco. You hear that? We have to do it ourselves. And the only way we're going to do it is we got to come and claim the pre-existing sovereignty of Morocco. We are claimed to be a part of the descendants and kinsmanships as heirships to inherit what our, what's in our motherland to protect ourselves. That's the right under international law. That's a, first of all, I ain't going to talk about international law. That's the right under the covenants of the ancient seers. That's the Daoutis. That's left for us. The cosmos decided to say you have to leave the land belongs to the people of the earlier civilization. You cannot take that right from us. We're not, we can wave it. And if we don't get this right now, that's what's going to happen. Three, Moore's body, politics, individual registration. We the people, the Imperial Parliament Council of the United Red Republic of Iraq. Let me explain. Um, so we say United Rest Republic of Rock. I don't want to keep going on and somebody keep hearing us say, what is that? Let me explain what that means. That means independently 
the provincial governors independently have their own political structure set up for civics, economics, and political affairs. They do domestic relationship among themselves on a, in Moroccan territory domain. Elect their representatives and then elect them to come up and form a imperial caucus council that's going to be under the international title name United Res Public of Morocco. You know what that means? That means every independent Moors government in Morocco, provincial government, has a say so in what is being voicing themselves internationally among themselves and to the international community. In other words, their representative is letting the international community know that we're here. We represent these people. We, we rep these individual Moors, provincial governments, all the, all, all, we, we are that. And you elect your own prime minister and deputy prime minister. There's a judiciary that you will elect that will sit and hear disputes among you of different domestic jurisdiction among the Moors. When something happened internationally, there's a council and an ambassador that represent that national government, that represent independently all the provincial governments so nobody, even the ecclesiastic bodies, will be protected. So, so the ecclesiastic bodies, you will send because you're sending your representative there to make sure that nobody friends on your covenant rights. So let's get this right. Ain't nobody going to be offending nobody. We're going to show all the love of the world through wisdom. And we're showing it through works already. Nobody can deny our works. We're working. We got work to show. We, how we get here? You can't get here unless you got works. Let's stop playing with each other. Come on now. This man right here teaching all kind of information. You can't even get this in college. You can't even pay for this kind of information. You're getting it free hardly for nothing, and people got problems. They got, oh, this happened. Oh, this happened. Who cares? Let's go to, this is uh, four, right, Tamara? Political body, pol um, body politics, individual form submissions. The Moore's body, poli polit that's politics, are free societies in their own Moore's land, joining together to form an alliance among ourselves collectively. Now, you must be reading somebody's mind. You good, sister. You getting good. Form our mind collectively with commandments, obligations, stipulations, judgments, and liabilities. Now, let me explain this. I'm not going to I'm going to stop right here and go down. When we say we the Moors of the consequentity on this side of the earth, this mass, large piece of land, island, we call land, island, a portion of the earth's surface. I'll say the portion of the earth's surface. That means I keep it, that is what it is. You inherit every good protection thing it is. An inheritance is for you not to starve in the earth. An inheritance is for you to be protected, your household, your family, protected, your women, the children, the man, and doing stuff for his, his, his kinsmanship. That's the protection you got. The inheritance is the protection. The right to exist in your land of fish, algae culture, to live, to get the herbs for your healing your body. To build a house from the different seasons, the storms, the weather. That's ours. That's the inherent right. Can't let nobody take that away. Still at four, yeah. Okay. Four. Okay, the vis oh, we we went to okay. Yeah. Four is here, step four. I'm still at step four right there. Okay. The body, a, a body uh, politics individual form submission. The most body politics are free societies. Okay, thank you, Tamara. Free societies in their own Moors land joined together to form an alliance among ourselves collectively with commandments, obligations, stipulations, judgments, and liabilities to limit the delegation of power of our officials elected by the people, by various Moors societies, community clans, and tribes. Okay. The following documents for submission are one, most provincial constitutional bylaws. 
now. That means among yourself. Now, let me talk to the ecclesiastic body so you understand what this means. To you, the ecclesiastic bodies, I'm going to use a more science temple. You say noble Drew Ali is your prophet. You say noble Drew Ali is your prophet. Then that means that you have to go by his constitution will have to be the thing that will operate as your covenant, your ordinance, your, your charter that would enable you now to have however it's set up to set up the representatives of that or elected representatives of that ecclesiastic body. Now, when we go to sign a treaty, you have to have the head of that ecclesiastic body that's elected to come there and sign on your behalf to lift your flag and your seal. The problem is not going to be this. Y'all got to solve the problem among the small science temples because everybody claim to be using the same constitution but claim we're not brothers and sisters. That's something wrong with that. Can't have that. Because that's the making the people look at us like we uncivilized. So the more science temple have to get that together among themselves and get their seal, come together and they let among themselves and form on a treaty among themselves and give that more science temple the head, who's going to head that up collectively as ecclesiastic bodies and then set up who's going to be the person that's going to represent them in the international, uh, the national government part under sovereignty of Morocco. That's not hard. Y'all you figure it out, get it together and get back with us. The, the social trust the provincial governments that operate outside ecclesiastic, you have a social trust. What that mean? Y'all form yourself into what you call a public community, living among each other. You're going to be doing bartering, economics. There are going to be disputes in that territory among y'all. So you create a social trust to protect your rights and make sure you stay the beneficiaries, that your rights are not still. Like if your rights are stolen and, you've been, and, you, and, you, and you don't do anything about it, then you waive your inheritance. Someone will step in with a political jurisdiction, and they'll govern you and use you as a surety, make you pay taxes on your own land and pay for your own water. That's what's being done now. That can be done. Don't tell me that we're not a refugee. Don't sit up and tell me I got $100 million and I'm living on 100 acres, and the state can come and get you off there any time they feel like it. They can take you in a courtroom and get jurisdiction over your body. Negro, black, Afro-American color being there. Come on, stop playing. You can't buy more consequentity. You can't buy that. Remember your status. Oh, I'm German. You German? Are you German more? Oh, you German more? You still a more? Okay, if you're a German, if you're a German, then you don't. You then okay with Germany? What kind of status do you got? You're a citizen. That means you're a citizen of the German political government, which is European occupying power in Phoenicia. Let's stop playing with each other. Where's your Moors government? That where's your Moors provincial government in Germany? Representing what? Your Moors pedigree, as indigenous and aboriginal to the land. We ain't got to play. We got to learn this. Smile the door, Professor Abdul. Two, you got to have your flag. You got to have a flag to identify. The flag is your sign to identify your nation. Whether you got a vessel, it identify you coming from your motherland. The flag is placed on your buildings. It placed in front of your house. It placed the record recognize that you are a part, that you are a living being occupying a political jurisdiction inside your own province of Morocco. Now we got the seal. You have to create a seal. Why shouldn't we create a seal? Because all because all the indigenous nations knew this science and they had it on seal. As a matter of fact, the United States got ours. Time of right. That's why the seal is not patented by the United States. The eagle seal with all that in the pyramid, that is the aboriginal. United States displayed that, that that's the standing sovereignty. They explained these seals on everything to say they're existing to do what they're doing based on what? Our sovereignty. Weekly Moors provincial government meetings. United Red Republic of Morocco will schedule a series of online conference meetings three to six months. The, okay, the, the, the Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus, the society, 
will schedule a series of online conference meetings, three to six months, that will aid in facilitating the national political unity of the various Moors body politics, politics in a central government body. The online conference calls will be consistent. Review, review completion, completion of Moore's body politics formation, review and understanding of the treaty enforcement, consular jurisdiction, review and revise Moore's treaties of amnesty and commerce for national conventions. Now that there, I'm explaining four. When we, when, it's important that we get up and get this running because then now when we, when we ratify these conventions and these actions and declarations, we can preserve our rights based in a treaty or based on pre-existing laws that exist before even the treaty was signed. So that way now we sign that convention, we come in and say these rights are reserved to the people. I mean, they already exist. You can't give them to us now. It's impossible. So we're not going to agree with that because we already had it. That's what they're reserving your rights to me. You got to know this stuff, man. This stuff, this is deep. Now we're dealing with more. Are we, are we finished down here, Tamara? Are we dealing with more treaty signing? What we at six? Okay. We're dealing with Moore's Treaty Signing Preamble. Whereas the Imperial Parliament Council of the United Republic of Morocco and the various Moore's body politics have determined to enter into an alliance on a permanent basis. Through amnesty and commerce, which prevail between the contracting parties by a treaty, which shall designate with precise precision, I mean, excuse me, precision, the protection and security of our perspective lands, air, waters, and boundaries, uh, boundaries and borders. The land of Morocco known as Turtle Island, a land is within the Northwest and Southern Hemisphere with the United Red Republic of Morocco as the national representative for, the, for their, their national interests and affairs. That is beautiful. Please look, please, please hear us. When I met, Profe I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to seven. When I met Professor Abdullah, after he enlightened me, pulled me up the freeze, and I got his information. I had went before people and was told to see a psychiatrist behind this man's information. But when I met him two years ago, if that was two years ago, and, and how long that was, uh, Noble? No, I ain't talking about I'm talking about we met, we connected, excuse me. When we, when we connected two years ago, my seer said, I, I have people around me, Tamara, I'm being honest with you. I have people around me, man, they is a fraud. They had all this education and all this, but they was not for the people. They was greedy. And they was trying to get me to get their packs together so I could take them down and they was going to run. I ain't going to say somebody line or in, or online, but it's, I know about people. When I met Professor Abdullah and I met Tamara, I met him first. <sighs> that was it. I said, I can't let this man get away at all. Like a sister said, Abdullah is a wonder. It's like he fell out the sky. And I'm keeping it real. For y'all to understand the value of Professor Abdullah, I'm sorry. You're going to be punished for that. Professor Abdullah like somebody that fell out of the clouds. I'm, that's my opinion. I don't dealt with all kind of people. And this man said, let me show you how to do this. I've been, I've been doing this for a while. I deal with social he said, we got to get this science to the people. This information, man, is not out there. Then he brought Tamara a couple of days later. Tamara didn't even fight it. We start doing this stuff. This sister starts speaking this stuff fluent. Then I said, Tamara, you know, the, we had a constitution, the Air Corps. Look how she researched and said that even up in Canada, all oh, that's part of the Air Corps, even the Leonard Abbey's. So, we have we already lumped in to know to do this, but with Ab dude, I met her, that was it. I need I needed them because they were sent by they was born for this time. That's why they, they not let nobody get in the way. But now I'm faced to explain the difference between ecclesiastic government and a social trust, a trust with national public government. I did that. Now I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna read um then I'm gonna go to the seventh. This, 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 there can be two types of government that has a absolutely right to operate their own political, civic, and economic affairs. 
The first is Ecclesiastic Congregation Society Community. Banding together based on the pre-existing ancient, the ancient ancestors covenants, ordinance, statutes, and, 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 and decrees that are operating and standing on the pre-decisions as, and as the deciding principle that settled foundation of the ancient civilizations that was guided by the seers, prophets, and apostles that was ordained by the Lord God, head of the spiritual world. So I, I'm going to stop there. I don't want nobody getting offended by that because the cosmos is a mother. Anytime something comes from something, it got to have the feminine principle. The father is the enforcing part of the mother. The mother sends forth her what? That's why you hear in the Bible it say, my mother, my father. You don't understand what that means. You take it the wrong way. Oh, they talking about a woman. Come on, not physical. We're talking about attributes here. There's a, there got to be. So we want to make sure we get this straight because, you know, somebody can slip in here and try to divide us just by that statement. So I just rectify that. A mother, feminine and masculine. Feminine and masculine. In order to have something, just like the earth, where you get the seed from? The earth. The seed that you put back into the earth to grow comes from the earth. Where do you think it comes from? So it's only one mother. But there's a, something going on. When a seed come out of the earth, it's operating in a masculine format. To put back to it so it can give it something. We got to get, get this right, man. We got to get this right. Man, you, do you know what's really going on down here? Terror. This is terror going on down here. I'm going to read this last paragraph of my finish seven. There is another form of government that is formed by charters, by others, more population of people that's living in the same Providence territory in Morocco with the ecclesiastic uh, constitution, uh, congregation population. Now, they are the ones that have a right. I'm going to have it here. They have a right to form a charter constitution as their social trust to protect their rights, either as a member of ecclesiastic government, holding no allegiance to any government that's not operating or delegated authority by the pre-existing covenants, statutes, ordinance of the divine seer, prophets, and apostles of their ancient ancestors. And the Moorish population of people coming together as a different group community living in the same territory domain of Morocco may come together to have a do domestic government relationship among themselves to barter, trade, police, judge, and elect their own officials, representatives, and officers. So I'm going to read seven. So I've said a lot to bring us around so we know what direction we're going. The international process server, server, the various Moore's body politics do not create and form the United Republic of Morocco. As the central government, as a central government body to now pro re proclaim our national statehood in the eyes and in the hearing of the whole world of recognized nation. Now, what we're saying is that there are nations, many nations that signed the Accra Algiers and signed previous treaties, with, but you have in the most Moors and Masonry book, pre existing treaties, and they signed acts. What happens is it's already pre existing. The right is there, the sovereignty is there. It just has to be reclaimed. That's it. In order to do that, you have to come with a flag, a constitution, a flag, and a seal. Why? Because the Moors that wrote the Muslim treaties knew that that's how government operates. The United Mexican States had a constitution. Look it up. They had a seal. They had a flag. They had a constitution. The United Mexican States is the United Moors, Moroccan states. <coughs> Claiming their authority in the Spanish occupying colonial jurisdiction. That means they was claiming back the land to govern themselves to protect themselves. So if you see in the 18th century, the Moors is coming out of servitude. Don't get to, to see about the word Mexico, Mexican. 
Because the United Mexican states, that's Morocco. That's a Moroccan. What do you mean, Shim? They got melon. They got carbon. They're more. Come on. We, go, we got something we can point to what we're doing. Then you have the ecclesiastic body of the bishops and elders. Now, I'm going to tell you about a real elder. Can you see me, right? That's, that went at the war against Spain. The bishop and the priest strapped on their they weapon, took a banner, and put the national symbol that was their flag of their it's government. Oh, what was it? The motherland. You hear me now. A melanated woman mm -hmm. with a crown on her head. Am I right, nobles? <laughs> if you want to know, I'll let you know. I want you to hear this. The Moors that was in servitude stripped of their land, their, their tongue, speech of language, their hairdressing, their different ways of clothing, governing themselves, came back under an ecclesiastic body, went to war against the Spanish government. The ecclesiastic government had a flag. And the flag was a melanated Moor woman, Moorish woman, with a crown on her head. If you want camera, send it to you. We got it. Why did they have the Moor, the Moors woman on there with the crown on her head? Because out of the earth come what? Royalty. The people that came out of the earth got royalty from day one, first civilizations. That was given to them by the Cosmo. They understood this principle. And they said, this is our, this is what we're fighting for, our motherland. A melanated woman. He came from the woman. With a crown on her head, represent what? Majesty. The earth is majesty. Okay. Proclaiming our international statehood in the eyes of hands of the whole world of recognized nations to unite in a common effort to bring our people accelerated political economic progress and border social justice within the framework of a personal dignity and political liberty by depositing our instruments of treaty signature, signature power in the Organization of American States and United Nations. That's good, Tamara, you're good. I like the way you got that. Uh, I'm glad I was able to go over the seven points and reasons. I'm going to now bring up Professor Abdullah, and he's going to enlighten you on the next phase of this meeting. Thank you very much. I introduce to you Professor Abdullah. Islam, everyone. All right. Give my man Shim Malakai Bay Thundercloud. Man, it's well, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. Islam. All right. Foundational framework. Foundational framework. Good government. We have to. My my observation over twenty seven years with by observing conscious Moors that we, you know, have to work out, work out, work in getting out of our comfort zone. You know, we have to get out into the community. We have to get among those who are unconscious and, you know, educate them. We have to facilitate community-wide education. We have to work on getting out of that five or 10, you know, staying in that meeting setting. So this is um, foundational framework. So we have here the religious ceremonies protected. What's that? Religious ceremonies protected. Wampum number 99. The rites and festivals of each nation shall remain undisturbed and shall continue 
as before, because they were given by the people of old times as useful and necessary for the good of men. How the Nazi Iroquois Confederation, Confederacy. Today, as we are Atlas, with the world on our shoulders, and the, the world on our shoulders is that ancient knowledge. The Albions are standing on our shoulders of our ancient knowledge, festivals, ceremonies, rituals, holidays, astronomy, knowledge of map making, navigating seas, calendar making. They're standing on our ancient knowledge. We should be on their walls. So we're Atlas with the world on our shoulders. We've handed down this ancient knowledge, but we have not benefited from it for over 200 years. The Albions have benefited from our ancient knowledge. So next here. Moorish definition, definition Moorish body politic. Moor, the inhabitants and descendants, kinsmanship heirs of the ancient people of Morocco. Government, the people's right to control, direct, and administer their political, civics, and economic affairs through a constitutional structure to rule, command, and order among themselves collectively of a particular region, district, or province in the Moroccan dominion. Province, a region in Morocco where the Moors claim a particular boundary as a, as a provincial government. Provincial framework. Declaratory commitment, location, either in person, Zoom, or a combination. So it's setting up in a Zoom account. Body politics should set up a Zoom account. Uh, some of you may have location, meeting locations. Date and time of meetings and something that would be consistent. You know, something that's consistent as if you do something that's sporadic or it changes every every meeting. You know, people same bad time, same bad channel. Remember that same bad time, same pack channel concept. Finance, treasury, budget. Of course, we need a budget to pay for the uh, Zoom, Zoom account. Uh, attendance, keep and roll. You know, you would have, you know, a, your attendance sheet with the name of the body politic and or study group as we facilitate that, help you facilitate that study group into a body politic provincial government, attendance, you know, dated, minutes, keeping a record of, of what goes on in the, in the meetings. Communication methods, proton mail, email, which is free, have each member, you know, have a um, sign up for a Proton Mail, so you can send out information through Proton Mail. And updates if there's any change in meeting time. Tele Telegram, Messenger Chat, which is free. 
OneNote, which is free. You know, OneNote where you can upload files so that we have, we have access to those files. And those who have taken the classes, etymology courses, law courses, grammar courses, you've seen that um, the, the OneNote that we use, the, the Academy of Providence used the OneNote. Zoom, which is $14.99 a month. Zoom accounts $14.99 a month. So these are, so we have here, mod, number three, Maj Lease, Parliamentary Rules. Moore's Provincial Body Politics Name, Parliamentary Rule. Social Sites, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and what's that? Yeah. Uh, library, library. All right, uh, five basic website. And what you would have is a basic website, which is not expensive for just a basic site. About us page, contact us page, mission strategy page, Schedule of event page online when meetings are conducted. This framework is very important. This is a communication outlet. It shows structure and professionalism. All right, so we'll do uh, we're going to open up for uh, questions. Open up for questions. We're gonna open up for questions right now. Islam. 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 This is Terrence here. Um, I would like um, Tamara, because she knows better. Um, why we chose the um, Protein mail instead of any email. Instead of Gmail. Instead of Gmail or any other type of mail. Like why? Hot mail. I would like to, uh, I would, I would like them to know uh, why uh, we chose um, Protein mail. All right, Tamara. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> In 2019, when we were forming a caucus, we had a member on the caucus who was um, heavily into security and jurisdiction. So one of the things that she taught us was about being able to move our communication from the jurisdiction of the United States. So therefore, the uh, Proton Mail server is under the jurisdiction of the Hague. So all our communication is protected. We also have what you call um, um, VPN. We have VPN as well through Proton Mail. So therefore, all our communication that we are sharing one to another in our pro within our Proton Mail, within the caucus body politic, um, our information is secured from any um, jurisdiction of the United States to be able to just arbitrarily go into our emails and you know dump information or just um, gather information so it was just about security so the uh, proton mail is on the, the server of the Hague so that's why we went that route and it's free you can obtain a free um, proton mail but um, United Republic of Morocco well Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus on behalf of United Republic of Morocco um, Proton mail is not free because we had to increase it to a um, a service provider where we're able to send out uh, massive emails to um, different contacts at this at at one time. So um, they have different packages, very inexpensive. Um, so that's why we um, had to bump our. Um, membership up from being a free membership to one where we are able to access more services. 
Now, I will say with the Zoom, Zoom is free when you're conferencing one-on-one, one, one, you know, one-to-one. You can have unlimited conferencing um, uninterrupted, but anytime you have more than, you know, two, <laughs> you have a third person, Zoom would only allow you 45 minutes of conferencing, and then it will shut you off, and then you have to come back and restart over in your meeting. So we started out with the 1499, which allow you to have up to 100 participants on that um, for the 1499, and that's unlimited for anyone who's on there for your Zoom. Now, and, I, and thereafter, so our, our month of membership for Zoom is a little bit higher because we, not only we have the 1499, we have where we can um, host up to, I want to say 5,000? No, it's 5,000 now. 5, yes, yeah, 5,000. We can have up to 5,000 on our Zoom. Also, um, we have the educational Zoom, and we also have what you call the built-in cloud uh, server where uh, we're able to record to the cloud, but however, we have our engineer who extract the information and make a master copy of all our content. So it's just not, it's, our information is just not lost and sitting there. So if anything happened, we have a master copy of everything that we record. So that's how our membership for Zoom became, I think we, we 90 notes a month. So we went from 14.99 to 90 mo notes a month because we have an educational platform and we can have up to 5,000 participants on maximum. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll explain, go, go into Facebook, uh, Tamara. They're free. <laughs> They're free. Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, they are free social sites. Now I will tell you this, with those sites, I'm, I'm not, I utilize them, but I know we have some content creators that are in various body politics. That's why I put library up there, lbry.com. And that one allow you to uh, secure your own content and be able to place your content on your own website. So that way you don't have to worry about the censored crap that's going on. Like every time you try to upload information to YouTube or uh, Facebook, then you, next thing you know, you're being censored at, or I don't know how you put in, be placed in virtual jail and all this crazy stuff, you know? So one would think that um, these are these are private, these are private international platforms. They're not public, they're private international, which means they do not fall under the, um, the public constitution of violation of any one constitutional rights of expression because they, that's why you see they have their community rules and standards. That's what makes them public. That's what makes them a private international because they have those international rules and standards, um, community standards, I'm sorry, community standards. Um, so yes, um, there, so for me, I utilize those social sites such as Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, but we, we capture a lot of our content on library, which you can create as many channel as you would like, and then you can host your, your content onto your website uninterrupted, unmolested. So that's why I placed that one on there. Um, it looks like that uh, male, oh, okay. Now, someone placed in the chat, mailfence.com. I have to look into that. Mailbox.org, I have to look in that, into that. Startmail.com, I have to look into that. And the reason why I say I have to look into that is because we're dealing with jurisdiction here. So I don't know what jurisdiction they reside in. So, um, and we're also working on that as an ecclesiastical body. We're working on um, the IPO for Morocco's own internet protocol. So 
we would not no longer be under the jurisdiction of the United States political jurisdiction when it comes to that, and that's dealing with the Bern Treaty. So we're in the process of working on that as of now as well. That's it. Questions, questions. Ms. Rahm, uh, may I uh, have the floor, please? Hey. Yes, go ahead. All right, Ms. Rahm Morris, uh, yes, uh, you know, I don't want to speak too much and take too much time, but um, I would like to know how I can immediately, uh, you know, get in league with you brothers over there and peace and greetings, uh, brother Abdullah and brother Shim. Uh, it's been a minute and I've been, you know, intending to get involved and in touch with you brothers. Uh, you know, I'm facing, a, you know, a lot of adversity here at the Khalifa territory. Uh, I am one man without the unity of my peoples uh, at this time. And uh, I want to basically, I uh, want to fall in order and uh, I want uh, access to the, the proper resources so that I can uphold our birthrights properly. Uh, and just so we can be in order instead of, uh, you know, a lot of us, we making errors and just coming in different, uh, you know, just doing different things. We need to come in order and be in unison. Um, and so now that I'm here and speaking to you brothers, uh, you know, I want to know how I can get in, uh, involved. Uh, Anthony Shankle Bay, it's, it's interesting, uh, was one of the brothers that was over here at the Khalifa territory. Uh, and, you know, we were uh, building here uh, with the brother Ramiel El Bay. Uh, for some specific reasons, uh, there was some fallout and things didn't go so well. But that being said, uh, I, I'm glad to see the brothers there with, with you brothers and working with you brothers. And so I want to, I want to come into order and uh, I want access to the resources so that I can do, I'm already doing my part in upholding, uh, you know, our birthright, but I need assistance from, from my peoples and my brothers and sisters. And so I yield the floor. All right, the answer, the answer to your question is your presence. You're here, you're, you're present. You're yes. present on Zoom. The resources, you have access to the resource because you're on Zoom right now. I just, I just yes. want to, I, I just want you to be aware of. I mean, I, I, I heard your question. The assistance is here. This is why we're, you know, having these. This is these are going to be classes. These are classes and meeting sessions. We're here to assist you. This is why Shim went through the seven steps and took his time and, and explained the seven steps. This will be uploaded on the OneNote. So you can review tonight's session. All the sessions will be uploaded on OneNote. This, this assistance is what, you, what you're getting now. All right, this is why we're going through the the framework. This is this is the assistance. This is the help. It's on. All right. I need I need, I need you to recognize that this is the help. You, you're getting help now. Yes. All right. Let, let me say this. I'm one of the active moors. I want to take not only a regular part. I, I want to be. I want you to give me. The, I want to be there, and I want to be fully involved. As whereas I'm not just here to sit and listen. I'm I'm ready to take action because. It's urgent, and I feel the urgency. It's urgent. You understand? All right. All right. Give me, give me a minute. All right. My 27 years, brother. I know you wanted 100 years ago. You wanted 100 years ago. I, I got you. I, I hear you. I feel you. The help is now. It's here. I just, I need you to walk with me with practicality. It's not going to happen overnight. You're here now. This is a this is a process. And you're going to be taking notes. If you need to review tonight's session, you'll be have you'll have access to that. But I I just I I, I feel the anxiety because you wanted a hundred years ago. I get that, but that's not practical. Wow. This conversation I'm having with you now, I've had with this brother. I've had with this brother. Trust me, I've had with this brother. <laughs> I've had with this brother. Trust me, he can tell you. Yeah. 
All right? <laughs> Please hear me, brother. I heard that. It's long. All right? Yeah. All right, next. Mm -hmm. iPhone. Lower your hand. iPhone. I'll mute uh, your mic. Okay. Peace, peace. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, peace. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> greetings, everybody. Um, greetings. My question is, um, I'm trying to understand something. It may sound minute, but um, in dealing with the treaties, right? In, de in dealing with the treaties, we should only file suit in the Supreme Court of the United States in DC, correct? Or because I realize there's a difference in the Supreme Court in Manhattan, in the five boroughs, there's a United States Supreme Court, and then there's the Supreme Court of the United States of America. And in, in filing suits or whatever against any public official or whatever, we should only, I'm trying to understand if we should only do it in the Supreme Court of the United States in DC <clears throat> versus federal district court or uh, Supreme Court uh, of the United States. I, I mean, United States Supreme Court. Like the only one court we should deal with is the Supreme Court of the United States of America in DC, correct? That's the uh, common law court, correct? Or am I, am I wrong? Let's answer the question, brother. Give us a chance to answer your question. All right, go ahead. United States was told by their parent, the crown, the crowns, France, Spain, Great Britain. In 19, the early 1900s, there was a gathering of nations in the convention of an under act concerning Morocco. That's our motherland. Before they got into the articles, they made it clear that United States have absolutely no authority to make any decisions based on European questions of law. What is your European fair? That's the more treaties. Now, in 1952, I'll let Abdullah explain. They went to the Hague. Explain it, Abdullah. And I, that you understand why. And they, in 1952, in the International Court of Justice, a case between France and the United States dealt with the most fabled nation clause. Most fabled nation clause deals with the tariff, all right, or an open door policy. You know, um, instead of getting a, having, we levied a 15% tariff, you know, you get the most favorable nation status, you know, to a less lesser tariff, all right? And then we'd also open door policy, then with international law principles. The United States lost that case in 1952. As a result of the United States losing that case, the United States Congress had to legislate dealing with the removal of the United States consular courts at Morocco. That was legislated. They had to, that is because it had to be done through legislation, but that had nothing to do with, it had to be do with the United States losing that case. So there's been a, a misrepresentation of information that Eisenhower shut down Moorish consular courts. Not, I, the United States doesn't have that authority. The, in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, there's no, there's no article where the United States has the authority in Northern Articles to shut down Moorish consular courts. Mm, Eisenhower okay. did not shut down Moorish consular courts. Okay. The International Court of Justice, United States lost that case in the International Court of Justice. There was three types of treaties that were used to adjudicate that case. The first type of treaties, was the primary type of treaties, was the more bilateral treaties between Morocco and 10 European powers, between Morocco and France, between Morocco and Belgium, between Morocco and Sweden, between Morocco and the Netherlands, between Morocco and the United States. 
between Morocco and Belgium, between Morocco and Spain, between Morocco and Sardinia, between Morocco and Denmark, between 1631 to 1892. In Moors and Maestri, I have the treaty between Morocco and France, between Morocco and the Netherlands, between Morocco and England slash Great Britain, from the 16, early 1600s to the early 1900s. Second type of treaty that was used is the Act to Protect Morocco, 1880. Third type of treaty, and, and also the Act of Algiers in 1907, which Rich, Rich Shim alluded to. So the Act to Protect Morocco and the Act of uh, 1880 and the Act of Algiers of 1907. That's the second type of treaty. The third type of treaty that was used to adjudicate that case was the 1912 French Protectorate. So these are the three types of treaties. So what does that mean? Let's look at go back to the first type of treaties. Between these, these bilateral treaties between Morocco and these 10 European powers between 1631 to 1892. That those treaties are still in force. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay, to continue. Finish, to finish up, thank you, Professor Abdul. I just wanted to uh, make it clear. That, uh, Thank you. That's your question. The reason why we don't belong into United States district courts, even though United States render de facto opinions to draw you in and they write bonds. See, the moment you go in the court, they write bonds. So they run a, a, a commodity. They run a, a business. The reason why you don't supposed to go into that courtroom, the moment in, in 1907, I think 1906 or seven, I might be wrong, the Accra Algeris stripped the United States and rendering decisions based on European affairs. So if they agreed to that by signing that convention, the act, the treaty. So when you go into United States jurisdiction, you got to make sure that when you go in there, that the, that the Moors government that was doing into to contracts with the European powers allow you to go. Remember, remember that's not, remember, it's set up for counselors, councils. So you had the British Council, the French Council, the Spanish Council, Portuguese Council, and you also have the United States Council. They lost that jurisdiction. Now, there's nothing in the treaties giving the courts, the courts of the United States jurisdiction and international affairs dealing with the European nations. Because the United States is only a host of descendants of, of, of European nations that came off a boat with a stipulated liability and obligation as a debtor. They, they came over as a debtor, their ancestors was a debtor, and they still going to inherit the debtor rights. They still, to this day, is a debtor even under their constitution. Why? Because they're still paying tribute to the crown. Why? Because they was given a treaty. They was given the hosty nation, granted them. They didn't come and say, well, I got a right to this. They was granted the right to operate independently as a nation. That was a right granted to them. This is not their motherland. This is not the crowns was given the occupying jurisdiction and some of the crowns was even conveyed the land separately to run a political jurisdiction. So their ancestors came off a boat. So the obligation and liability on, as far as when the ancestors fall on them. So you can't go into the course of a debtor as a creditor. I mean, what you mean? Blood consequently, most consequently and say, can you please, your government, someone in your government as a political organization is not honoring the treaties. The, the court is going to look and say, let's go to the Constitution, Article 3. Deal with diversity of citizen. Deal with United States are able to hear treaties. Now, we talk about more treaties. When United States can only hear what is delegated to them in a treaty to hear. I mean, the treaty was already pre-existing before the Constitution was formed. That's why it's the law of the land. So if you take a matter before the judges, that means you can't claim that your rights are protected in the treaty. You only can go in front of a claim because he only got delegation authority to hear a case dealing with Constitution. 
Fifth, Fourth Amendment, the Articles of the Constitution. And Indians are going to sit awards. They got captured. Therefore, the United States should serve jurisdiction over them because the United States can sit them in the political jurisdictional vineyard of the United States and that they being taken care of because once somebody take care of you and feed you, you're in servitude. So you can't go in that court. What you can do is you sit down and talk among ourselves and, sh and learn how to operate from the council of jurisdiction, me under the tree. I mean, remember, if there's no Morris Council, please hear me out, because I know we got situations. But we don't want nobody going under the individually. So let's just come and sit down and force the person that's making a claim from you, force him to show that he have jurisdiction as the council. And how to do that is to file a certain writ with a letter of erogatory asking for a warrant for it to be transferred to the proper jurisdiction. See, this can be done. But the problem is, you get Moors out there still, in, still trying to steal ideals and still positive law. I did this. I, I got a remedy for the people. I know how to do this. You ain't got no country. You ain't, you ain't claim no existence sovereignty in Morocco. You one person. They can come and put a needle in your arm, you gone. Put a pill in your mouth, make you swallow. What you gonna do? You walk around like this. I'm telling the truth. You better, you better not be going to places. They look, they dangerous. And they really mad now. You start to mess up their business now, and you don't tell them what they do to you. So let's, when you got a problem, and it's a situation, this is why we teach about the Commerce Treaty, forcing the J Treaty. Abdullah talked about this today. This got to be done. This is serious. Moors are getting labeled as terrorists just because they're driving an automobile and say they have a right to travel. Good God Almighty. They, these, our people are being told by the rest of the world that we are terrorists. Because we're going, because we going in their courtrooms, because we're doing something the treaty doesn't prescribe. So what are you doing? I got this. I'm going in myself like a gangster. That's a terrorist. I'm a moor. This is my land. You just sold you. You just sold your. You just sold yourself out. They, they can pull your own instrument up and say this is not what this document say. The treaty don't say that. Lock his ass up. It's fraud. Where the council at? You see what I'm saying? This a lot of this stuff. These woes are coming on the moors. Or because our own doing and not knowing how to stand properly under our status and how to contract and rely on our own structure. Next question. Last thing, choking. Open your mic. Master Chogan. Wahikyo well, Chogan. Thank you. Yes, thank you so thank much you. for the yes, opportunity. First of all, I want to acknowledge Brother Abdullah and Brother Shem for your impeccable presentation. Mom. I am uh, going to speak on behalf of the rising Arawak Nation, uh, which includes uh, Haiti and um, many other islands uh, in the Caribbean, and uh, the common theme that we are facing, particularly in the South Florida area, is that our people have been labeled as being refugees on their own continent. And as a result of that, many of them are being detained on the false pretense that they are illegal refugees. Uh, what can we do in terms of establishing travel documents for Moors who are from the rising Arawak nation? I yield. He's from the Tac Caribbean, which is a part of the Mo Morocco, which is extended territory because the islands flowed away on the great earthquake. They are, if you're in Africa, living in Africa, anywhere in Africa, you are more. You're not a Negro, you're not black, you're not color, you're not Afro-American. The treaties apply to you too, because you're in the Moroccan empire. When those treaties were assigned, they were to protect Moors throughout the political jurisdiction domain of Morocco. It just not the, see, 
Morocco domestically is here in Turtle Island, the large corner, a portion of the Earth's surface. But a lot of it broke away from Morocco. That's still Morocco. It's the extended territory that's thin across waters that's protected by the treaties. You have to have a political organization established. This is why we say you need a constitution, charter constitution. You need a flag, create your flag. You need your seal. Why? Because that letting every, and then you need your website. On your website, you need your 1-800 number. You need to create your cyber portion of the Earth's surface, which is your website. That's the cyber. That's all mental. Where somebody can look and see that you are a provincial government. And what you need to do is come together. Like Ab Professor Abdul said, and form an alliance. So we internationally become the sovereign central part that the Sultans held that is, in, that is embodied in the Paul Imperial Parliament Council and in the Prime Minister, the national government. Now, if you create this, you still have a right to claim a portion of the Earth's surface, and you have a constitution, a flag, and a seal. You have to be recognized once you make a proclamation that you're claiming that existence sovereignty, that you're reclaiming that existence sovereignty to possess this land and states, and that you have that, that, that the, the European nations have treaty obligations and it's a liability on them to honor them treaties. If you don't put up a structure, they're not going to respect it. That's why we're here today. Thank you for the question. Just follow the format, United West Republic of Morocco, and you'll get there. We'll get there. Next question. Sinai. Open your mic, please. Sanai? All right, she's coming. Can't hear you, Sanai? She's not talking at all. Is, is she on mute? She we don't hear you, Sanai. Turn your volume up. We want, we'd like to hear you. You have your computer upside down? That could be it. We'll go to the next one, we come back. Yes. My problems. Anyone else? Okay, we got one in the house. We got, yes. Islam, um, can you speak to the importance, if any, of a judiciary at the provincial government level? And can you speak to its importance uh, if any, at the national level slash United Res Republic of Morocco level? Explain this. Yeah, he, he's going to reiterate th those points because that was addressed earlier, but thank you. We, so us, we can be re reiterate that. Well, me and Professor Abdullah was driving in the car coming here. One of the, one of the things came up about where did this judiciary where we come from? Where do we come from? Now let's let's let's, let's, let's be frankly. Where did judiciary come from? Go back to the ancient Phoenician and Egyptian governments. It came from the people' rights to settle disputes among each other. Hear me out. Land in the territory in a nation, they operate domestically. They have disputes over quality of bartering, contracts, loans, border boundaries disputes. But what happened is they would elect honest men. To be in decision to hear the that's why they call it a trial of fact, to hear the facts and norms and present the evidence by two or three witnesses, or present a, 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 a written something, scroll or something. And the, then the trial of facts will base his decision 
on that. If they feel as though it was done wrong, there was a community of the clan in the clan that that matter could be bring, brought to because the people was of that community and had a right to, to, to see if that judge, that one man, made a proper decision based on the facts and norm. If they rule against a person, a person stood on righteousness that something done wrong, somebody's hiding, then the, the seer will step in and the seer will meditate and go to meditate and go into the spiritual realm, the divinity, and he will make a final decision. This is ancient principle I'm talking about here. This is why Moses was told by the, ch the, the chief, the king of Media, Media, to do what? To get out of the way and, high and ordain men to hear the disputes of the people. So when you hear judiciary, you're hearing the institution of law, the institution to be heard on a dispute by someone that's elected from the community or that nation or that political organization that's leading back anciently to tradition, ancient tradition. For instance, United Rest Public of Morocco is put together by what? The most provincial governors independently coming together collectively to form a central body so we all can be protected under the, our national constitution and claim a portion of the flag, the sovereignty under that flag, under Morocco now. Each of them elects able men that's able women that can make a rational decision from her village or from her providence. Rational, they mean they, 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 so they are familiar with the customs, the festivals, the rituals and traditions of the people. And they're familiar with the parliament that they elect that make the laws and statutes that govern them when they're dealing with a dispute. So they elect people to hear their disputes and make a decision. Now I'm going to deal with criminal here. So everybody know. Criminal and civil is the same thing. The only difference is when you got a dispute, me and Professor Abdul got a dispute on a contract or the boundaries of a land or how the assets going to be split or this corporation, he took this much in the will. That's the speech. Now, criminal is this. It's called the civil disobedience of the confidence of the whole community, the nation. That means you violate the, the confidence and the breach of the peace. What are you talking about, Shem? You raped a woman. You stabbed a man to death. You went in a man's house and committed a burglary. What did you just did? You robbed that man. You, you pickpocketed him. You conned a man. That is the breach in the confidence of the peace. I mean, what are you doing? You go against the, 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 the you go against the, the set confidence that got the peace and security of the people. You breach that. That's criminal. That's why they put you, that's why they put you in a what you call confine you for civil disobedience for what you call repentance. So they put you away for that. That's you can't pay for that. No monetary policy. That's the difference between civil and criminal. You understand what I'm saying, nobles? So you ask me about judicial worry. I'm going, I'm going, I'm not going to just give you something like some people do. Hey, hey. No, I'm going to go to the depth. I'm going to look back and tell you that this is our ancestors knew this thing. What do you think a man go get incarcerated for killing somebody, raping them, robbing them, aggravated assault, theft? Con artist, embezzlement. Why you think they put him in, incarcerate him? They put him out of society for a particular time period where he loses his rights. He don't have the same standing because he breached. He broke the breach of the confidence of the peace of the security of the people, protection. He broke that. So in order now to get in good standing, he had to go into confinement and repentance. That's what it's for, so he can repent. Then they give him a probation period to get, to get what you call, convince the society and his elected officials that you're ready to operate again in that society. Now, you understand what I'm saying, nobles? Go ahead. Any more questions? Sinai. Sinai. Another question, go ahead.
Islam. Hold on. Um, yes, I, think Islam, Islam. I think they're having technical difficulties, so they're um, uploading their other laptop so they can um, ask the question that they need to ask. Okay. Do you have a question? They have a question and they're trying to get on the other laptop so they can um, get the audio to work. So it's something going on with their laptop. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Lamar, Lamar has another one. Okay, Lamar. Lamar. Islam. I mean, I hate to bring up this foreign jurisdiction, but uh, in the United States, their uh, judiciary is uh, appointed by the executive branch. So could you speak to the wisdom in that versus the judiciary being selected by uh, the people or the legislature? Uh, is that like a... Uh, balance of power type of thing? Or can you speak to that? Yes, sir. In, in the states, the justices are elected by the, the people. The Supreme Court and the Superior Court is elected by the people. The United States of America, when I said it again, the, 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 the statutory ball hijacked the government. And, and let me explain what I mean. Anytime you can elect your representatives, and you don't have a caucus or council to guide that representative based on your intent, meaning your proposals and your bills and statutes, that you say, this, this is what we got, a host of bills and statutes. He, excuse me, he's supposed to go to the House and the other representatives of the more provincial government say, hey, listen, this is what I got for my caucus and my council and my, and my district. These are the people that elected me, and as they elected me, they have a right to a council. The council is the one to bring the bills and stuff to me. Let me... I have to present this to my private com committee, and this has to be offered first to the floor. I mean, I have to get this revised by committee and get it back to them, because they're the council that rep the council that represent the people, their caucus. So once that government is set like that, they can't run with the people right. I mean, they can't just make laws that's going to take away the people rights. Then that mean that people are only voting for a dictator. I mean, they're only good for the six year, four years of voting in a dictator. So you got to walk into a courtroom and be like, oh, the judge. The judge going to get you. The judge going to throw you in jail. What are you talking about? Why are you like that? You elected that man or that woman. What the hell is going on here? That's a dictator. You can't talk. You can't get up and say nothing. And then you got to say, your honor. Got a problem. That, that's the first problem. Um, see, see what's going on here? That's me. They up and they, they put you down a class lower and they stepping up above you. I mean, you don't have a right to do nothing unless they tell you that. That's a dictator. You, you know, a dictator is just not self-proclaimed. A dictator can be elected in every so often because the people are unaware of, the, of what he's doing. How you bind he or she, how you bind he or she, excuse me, how you bind he or she is in the instrument, the language that's in the instrument has to be mandatory where they can't run. And when you don't perform, the, the, the population of voters always, at any time, can sign a petition for your removal. You understand what I'm saying? So the reason why they didn't have it, because they wanted, they wanted the president wanted control. The Senate wanted control. Because that affects the party. You understand what I'm saying? The party wants to be control the judge's decision. This is why they took that out. That's why the appellate courts in the states, they vote. The people vote for them. But it's not in the Constitution to embody, to bind their hands, tie their hands together, handcuff them. Mandatory that this is all they can do and that if it's not done this way, you have to be impeached. You can file a petition and impeach you. Yes. Now I'm just going to ask a question. Make a statement. Actually, since we're on the topic about voting, can we go into that just a little bit deeper? Because I think 
uh, what should not happen. One would think that this should only be, um, let me let me just make sure I get the right word because I know how our mores are trying to slap you with one little word, period, out of place. Um, <laughs> this is not just a movement of conscious mores only. More, a more is a more. So when we're talking about campaigning and voting, the campaign should not just be of the Moors who are just only conscious right now of what's going on. So let, can we can we get into a little bit of that? Well, go ahead. please, please do. Yes, I did speak to that. Let's, and she wants to open that up. Thank you for that. As I, as I said before, that um, my 27 years observation is nationalizing conscious Moors stay within their their group and don't expand out to the community. What I, my observation is that I don't think Moors know how to do that. Know how to reach out to the community. You know, um, over the years, I would have a brother who's, was involved in Masonic order. And they say, Abdullah, I left my lodge when I became conscious because they're not teaching more science there at the lodge. That's, there's a problem with that. That's a problem. You left a, net, a nationwide network. You were part of a nationwide network of unconscious Moors. You left that to be with five or ten conscious mores instead of learning from the conscious mores and taking it back to unconscious mores and still being involved. I've heard that from about 25 different brothers over the years. I've seen things like that. I also seen where conscious someone Conscious Moors will leave, you know, for other groupings of con unconscious Moors because they're not teaching. But we have to learn to t get among conscious more unconscious Moors and teach them. I don't. Th I think that these type of classes will help facilitate that. I, I think that because conscious Moors don't have a good grasp on what this movement is about. So there's a little uncertainty, you know, of being smacked down by, you know, family members or, you know, friends and, all right. But I think if we, if we raise your level of knowledge, that would give you the confidence to speak to your family members and friends and co-workers and go out to the community with love. You know, I've seen conscious mores become arrogant. I have to speak to this. She wants me to open it up, I'm opening it up. 27 years of observation. Conscious mores become arrogant and self-righteous. That they're better than their brothers and sisters. Yes, I've seen that. I know something that you don't know. I also, and also another th mindset. I have not been, I have not been, I have not seen a, a, a more in, you know, they'll say, well, I have not seen a more in a week. Well, you haven't seen your mother, your father. Your sisters, your brothers, your, your children, your, your, your co-workers, your, fam your friends. Absolutely. Well, you know what I mean? That's a problem. No, 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 no. We got to get out of that. No, it's not. You know what I mean. Unconscious mores are mores. Unconscious mores are mores. Unconscious mores are mores. I, I was a brother. I was at the 69th Street train station, Philadelphia. And a brother had called me. 
He said, Abdullah, man, I've seen you and Taj on YouTube and this, you know, and he says, you know, I, uh, I need your help, you know, and, um, you know, I want to, um, you know, deal with Moors, you know, in the prison. I said, hold on, brother. I want to, you, you're soliciting my help. So I want to be clear. What do you mean by Moors? What do you mean by Moors? He said, well, conscious Moors. I said, brother, I can't help you. I won't help you. Because I don't just deal with conscious Moors. I don't have that mindset. I don't have that mindset of just conscious Moors. I will not work with anybody who has that mindset. We're Moors. I think there has to be a shift in thinking. I think that's a lot of it, that shift in thinking. And we will help. We will help. We'll put out the Moroccan light, the Moroccan post. The Moroccan post. The newspaper in printed form. We will help you. We will help facilitate. Get among quote unquote black conscious people who have who are out in the community. Find those who network. Go to black quote unquote black events, black history month and stuff. And speak and get involved, get a table. You have to go out, you have to reach out to the community. See what events are involved in the community. You gotta go out. Get a set a table up. When you get a table, don't be to yourself. Speak to the people. You have a brochure. We'll help you. We'll help you. We'll help you do that. We have to come out. We have to reach out to the people. We have to reach out, not just you know, have meetings every week or something just among yourselves. You have to reach out. Right. All right? right? We have to reach out. Islam, this is Sister Nana. Islam, Islam. Peace. Thank you for um, the question, um, brother, and thank you for the eloquent um, uh, answer that you just gave. Um, appreciate that because, yes, we do have to... Um, reach out, can't just sit there and just be studying and, you know, doing stuff on the internet. You got to get out and reach the people, especially the children, the elders, um, but just all of our people. Um, my question, um, train of thought is, um, what is it? Um, so what, what money system do we utilize? Gold, silver, do we go back to that standard? Um, wh what do we do? I'm sure that we're, that's right up Shem's alley as far as um, <laughs> the monetary, uh, um, you know, system to utilize for the Moors um, for the nation. Uh, do we have the, do we utilize what we've been utilizing, USD? Um, we know that the, um, there's a push for the funds to be backed by, you know, gold and precious metals and, uh, uh, and the like. Um, do we mint our, go back to minting our own coins? What do we do? And where can I get one of those fly t-shirts? They are beautiful. I want one of those. Tamara, where I get one of those? So I yield. So Shem, please answer that for me. Can't hear. That's communication problems. Try turning the mic on and turning it back off. Hello? Can you Got you. Me? Yes. Right. Can you hear me, Fabulous? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> yes, my brother. I know you. I know your voice. 
and thank you, um, Shem uh, um, uh, and and Tamara and Abdullah and the rest of the uh, um, the staff and everyone that is participating tonight. I just want to just give a shout out to all of us and those the, and those that are yet to come. Okay, Sister Nana, we're getting back to the money system. Uh, we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and we're gonna claim the lands. We're going to reclaim the lands, possession of the lands. Now, in the lands is the precious metals, the minerals, the gems, the livestock come from the land, and so do the vegetables and the herbs. And then we're going to claim, by claiming the land, we claim the political jurisdiction, territory of the water, which in the water is marine life, which gives a lot of a market, which is called an industry. Now, in order to, when you're dealing with the, the, the money system, you're dealing with the ancient system of exchange. Therefore, one must have a government to stand behind this currency. Because if, it's, if something happened, it had to be a war. You got to have a military. You would never see, this is why Roosevelt took the money out of circulation. Because it wasn't, it wasn't, the money was taken out of circulation to take away, to put the people in more debt. You understand what I mean? They came up with a system a mind saying, if nobody's paying for nothing in reality, then nobody can own anything. So we can do this, if we can do this plan, we can hold our precious metals for value and don't have to care about even bringing this, the circulation back on the market for value because the people are so caught up in paying for something of no value. Now, it's always been a culture. It's always been a culture. The wine, the vineyard, the land, because everything comes from the land. That's the greatest asset in the world that we have. I can have a land and have all the assets, cannabis, marine, turkeys, geese, chickens, all types of things. Growing all types all year round, vegetables, herbs. I can have marine. I can have everything now. I go to a nation and say, he say, okay, I want to buy that off you. He wants to hand me a currency. Now, if he's not, if I'm going overseas and he hand me the precious metals of that nation and they keep handing me the precious metals of that nation and, and that puts a, 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 a run on the national government treasury to print out money, a value, but that money is leaving the nation. Going back to another nation and being minted in, refined and put into their circulation. What just happened to the other nation? It's going on. It's going. It's going under because the metals are, are, are the metals are few. Mm -hmm. Depleting. So yes. In order for them to hold their reserve and back up any of their schemes and plans, they took the money out of circulation over here, so the people couldn't have nothing. Never. I mean, they can always accuse the people not paying for anything, and you'll never get back to gold and silver again. It's going to be. Digital money means money off of confidence, means money that's existing off of a, a original exchange, your bonds. Meaning that if I come with a thousand pigs, four thousand chickens, four thousand turkeys, a um, hundred thousand salmon, we write it up. You accept it, and you're going to pay for it in what? They ain't going to take no gold and silver no more. It's not going to be that. It's going to be the, with the uniform commercial cr created, which is called a negotiable instrument, bill of exchange. Bill of exchange. That's the bill. He go to the exchange. That means that paper will be able to be registered as digital money based on the bond, based on the, based on the, the position of that family estate, rich family estate, or based on the position of the government standing behind that piece of paper. So they never tend, they, they know about the money game. If I take all these silver and gold all the time, because you know, what's the money system? You got platinum, you got gold, you got silver, you got copper, iron. That's the five money systems of the world. You ain't just handing them about the gold. They had copper, they had iron pennies, and brass. That's the five money system. 
they did away with that. And they, and they got everybody deceived as if, oh, go, 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 no, go, go back instruments coming back into existence. Go back credit coming back into existence. What do you mean? The nation's going to stand behind its debt obligation. The bankers of the state, private states, going to stand behind their obligation because they always get turned back and say we got in reserve real value, real substance. A farmer can stand behind his obligation and say, I got all this natural stuff and you got to live. The, the. So we have to remember that the system of bartering, they stole. We have to go back to the ancient principles of how this system was set up. When, a man, when they go back to ancient time, they, they weigh something, we put enough some copper, some brass, some iron, and he puts the gold. So the gold meant so much, the copper meant so much, the brass meant so much, and weight. Based on what? Based on what the, how, the head of the government say, or, or the head of that village say what it's value for. And that's the ancient system of bartering. Now, there have to be a gold rush. There have to be these metals got to be pulled out of the ground. So nations come up with, wait a minute. Why would I give all my precious gold in exchange for goods? And then when I want to do something, get by something, I don't have any more nothing. I'm a debtor now. So they realize the holding of the gold and the silver, brass and stuff is the value. We don't want to put it out in the open market. We want to just reserve it in a depository and apothecate off of that by using paper. You, you, you feel me? You, you understand what I'm saying, Sister Nana? Yes, I do, brother. And you know what I mean when you go and trade. What do you when you go and trade and you say I got a five billion, a five, a five hundred million dollar deal on the table? Are you walking in that trade with five hundred million dollars in gold and silver? Are you walking in that trade with five hundred million dollars in what? Paper. 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 Mm -hmm. Paper. Because they they want to they, they want to they, they done away with that. That system is done. They're not they're not giving that no precious metal no more. Because to give somebody, if you give a farmer, you give a farmer gold, silver, and copper to buy his goods, and he keeps selling it, he goes back and he can accumulate. You just make you just made what you call a common or a pagan, which is a might cultivate the land. You just made him wealthy. Yes. Sinai. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Nana. I see you, too. We've seen each other. Uh, Sinai. I want one of those shirts. Yes, sir. Islam. All right. Uh, I'm Dimitri Deleon Bay. I was wanting to know, do we have a charter under a Masonic Lodge? Because under the March 24th uh, meeting, we had a brother that said that Brother Abdul came to him and wanted to know if we could merge with them. And I wanted to know about that. Either way it goes, we're down with us and we're still going to make this happen. But I just want to know what was up with that part or if I understood that right. The Masonic lodges are chartered um, in London. You know, Prince Hall's there in London. They've got their charter. So we would not be under the subject to the jurisdiction. Uh, so you, if, you, if you're talking about creating your own charter, all right, from your body body politic that can be done but the key to I, I, i'm more interested in you are people having the knowledge though of astronomy you know astronomy you know you need a charter to do that you don't need a charter to get a, 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 a telescope all right so let's let me just you don't need a charter to get a telescope. Take out the telescope. You don't need a charter to do that. All right? You don't need a charter to chart the uh, Orion's belt, which, which is the pointer, you know, the archer. You know, 
You don't need a charter to put a, to put a rod in an open field and then tie a rope on it and do the succumput, all right? And then you see the, you know, the, the, the um, shadows casting. You don't need a charter to do that. I mean, so what's the, why would you need a, to even establish an order? I mean, if you want to establish an astronomy club or astronomy or society, you know, that'd, that'd be great. Or, you know, a navigational school, that would be great. I don't see any need to establish a Masonic order. Because I know what masonry is. It's not, masonry is not rips and, you know, signs or symbols. They're not symbols anyway. They're astronomical tools. There's no symbols. That's astronomical, those astronomical devices and tools being misrepresented as symbols. So it's knowing what masonry is. Once you know what masonry is, I, I strongly trust that you will change how you see this Masonic, your, your question. All right. Okay. I understand where you're coming from with that. And I have one more question, if I could. Hey, go ahead, brother. Can we get a business that mines precious metals to support our own currency? That, that will be, that, that's the Moorish provincial government's power and authority to go, in the, and, and go, to go into the ground and take the money, take the value out and refine it and place the value on it and do it among themselves. That's the first thing, to do it among yourself. You do have power, like Professor Abdullah say, to do that among yourself. In order to do that, you have to make sure the government structure is up. Then after government structure is up, you got to make sure that we stand behind the precious metals. Also, you will need a livestock, the land. You got to have the land. You got you to you reclaim and possess the land and the water. And we can do this among ourselves. That's, that's the privilege of having the Moorish Provincial Governors National because we're able to go back now and every nation sign the Accra Algiers and agree to assist us in our bank system. So that means we, we had a system. Morocco had a system. We have to get that back. Go ahead, next question. Next question. Got Mike's no, Galaxy. No, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Been very Mike's helpful. Galaxy. Appreciate you. Yes, yes Noble. Yes. Islam. Yes. Mike's Galaxy. Islam. I have a uh, couple of questions. I'm currently in uh, Ethiopia right now. Um, and it's uh, Mikael Tunica El Bay. Uh, I guess that's how my phone is delivering it over there. However, um, one of my questions is about current travel, um, support travel for international, if you can speak to that. Um, for us that's um, currently traveling internationally um, and what our plans are, you know, coming together with the same documentation, um, you know, across the board uh, that so that we're presenting the same type of documentation wherever we're going. Um, and then you addressed a little bit about the business and commerce, because I know yeah, it's a lot of that. Who gives one money, please, brother. Just answer, let's answer that, please. Okay. Because you, you know, let's get, just answer that. Okay. The reason why it's so important to claim to be a, a more provincial government and come together and sign a treaty among ourselves and create a national constitution is for us to make a deposit to be redeposited, to be recognized as the, as the descendants of the signatory signers of these treaties and acts. The treaties already preserve your right. Let me explain what I mean. When you say you're down in Africa right now, which you call Ethiopia, you are coming from a European political occupying jurisdiction in, in Morocco. 
the kingdom of Morocco. You know what I mean? The Moors land. The indigenous, the indigenous Aboriginal through the land. Because they signed treaties, Moors treaties, we have to, we can enforce the more the passports even down there. Because they're obligated in the Moors treaties in the Accra Algiers. Dealing with, remember these, these political, once these political European nations signed these treaties and these so-called African nations under their political jurisdiction, it's an automatically obligation liability on them. So we have to get our political structure together so we can present as the treaty say, the passport, the sign, and, paper, and, and paperwork. That's in the treaty. I didn't put that there before I was born. So in order to have a passport, you're navigating on a vessel, which they call ship. That's a vessel. A plane navigating through the clouds, steam, water. The treaty says that. If anybody be aboard, their passport alone. The problem is the Moors government has to be repossessed and reclaimed under that sovereignty of Morocco, then you have a, rela a diplomatic relationship with all these other nations and their commonwealths that's all over the world to honor the treaties. And then you won't have that problem because then you will have a passport that will put you in a database as a non-resident alien when you're traveling. That's the same thing in the United States. Remember, these governments have it set up dealing with treaty. The only problem is we ain't got our house in order. Once we get our house in order, we straighten out. Next question. Next question. The Go other question? question. He had another question. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, he had another, another question. Go ahead. Yes. It was the same same type of document. So I guess uh, that would be what you just answered, I guess. Um, same documentation across. Because I know right now, you know, we got all these different um, IDs uh, with amongst our nations. Um, right now, everybody's showing different different IDs and things like that, even on our land. Um, uh, if you guys can address that, uh, what would be the, you know, best, you know, um, benefit for us to have that same documentation so everything looks the same um, when we're traveling and, you know, doing whatever we need to do. Yes, I, I, listen, I, I have to give the United States lift a good hand to them because look what they did, they follow example. Of, of, of ancient government, look what they did. Everybody of the political organization has an ID, a, a identity card. They have a license. We wouldn't call it a license. We would call it an operational service card. But what they did was collectively, when they're dealing with something internationally, they go to the central government. You see this? When they got a dispute among each other, they go to their circuit courts, the honor the disputes. Now the thing about the IDs, you know why all that is happening? Because everybody just trying to find a remedy to be acknowledged, to be recognized. That's all they come down to. You just want to be recognized. You just want to be left alone. You just want to be able to say, hey, listen, I have y'all doing it. Why can't I do it? Because we ain't got a house in order. We need a political structure. That's what we're doing. That's why we're telling you to come together. Now, people say, more saying, you know what? Man, it's hard to get people. It's hard to do this. Professor Abdul just came up and say, told a brother, why would you be in a Masonic Lodge? For all these people, and you got all this knowledge, why don't you just use the knowledge, come out of the Masonic Lodge, keep going, and form your political organization with the Masonic Lodge Brotherhood and say, damn, they got something we ain't got. And another thing, a lot of y'all got degrees. You see what you see what Noble Tamar did and Professor Abdullah? They put together a university. Now listen to me good. The United West Public of uh, the Public of Morocco and Imperial Parliament, this, the, the, what you call the Venture uh, Council, the society we got, we probably, we probably could have about a hundred thousand to a half a million people. What are you talking about, shit? All we got to do is one thing put out in all the different states that we're going to be here four hours, three hours a week to give an intern a social degree or social certification from our university and that will help you along the way to get a job. Do you know we, they go on that website, we might get 100,000 people within a month. 
We're not doing that yet because we're not strong enough for that. So what we're doing, we're helping the Moors learn. We're helping the Moors learn. And the, you that's claiming to be a provincial Moors government, sitting there with people with degrees, why don't you do an intern? Do your website, your, you, do your, your school of learning, Moors learning. Register with your, your organization. We'll show you how to do that. Then register as a petition's name in the state doing business. And then turn around and give an internship and let them go on your website. I guarantee you, if you say this is a charity to help the people out of the condition, you go in there overnight, you look and say, oh, wait a minute. I got 10,000 people. Get ready and teach 10,000 people. Guess the benefit of it is? You have a population. See, that's the thing about it. You have a population of more population because everybody in that territory, is. you say only for the people that's of. The state of so the state of, state of so and so because you got to pay them in and in these counties they're gonna they're gonna arrest it when they arrest they have your application set that that's your population now guess what happened would you call it a censor a census you got a census you got a population so we can do this just learn how to use the proper bait and the tool to bait to get them in that's all it comes down to you got name uh, Professor Abdullah next question. Get the thing for the Islam. Islam. I love that. You have a question, brother? Next question. Who, who's, who's up? Batter up. Islam. Boy. So, Sharon? Yes, Islam. Islam. Um, I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, I'm wondering about the uh, Washita nation that is already recognized and already have temples. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, I guess why we're not actually connecting into their uh, system that's already in place. Can somebody uh, speak to that? And in fact, I'm, I'm looking at them and seeing that they are already established and my understanding is they're not corporate, they're not 501c3, so I'm curious about that. Islam, yes, thank uh, you. Yes, the reason why um, you say why we're not tapping into uh, them, first of all, the um, uh, the Washington del Demandes does not have a standing uh, government that's claiming a portion of the Earth's surface in Morocco. That's number one. The Washington del Demandes are going off uh, an empress, and they are operating not on our self-determination. They're operating on the ancient principles of the Washita under the Empress. I have no I, I, I have no disagreements with that. Now they can they can um they can come and um um sign a treaty. They can send the head of the Washita community and sign a treaty to the head of the, uh, the Washita. And they can send a representative to become part of the national government and we can go ahead and go to the uh, the uh Proper international depository, placing a national depository. Um, United Red Republic of Morocco and the caucus, the Council of Caucus from the society, um, cannot place themselves under a dictator, a monarchy. We would never do that. We believe in free exercise and autonomy government of the people. The people right to elect the officials, the power of the people, for the people, and by the people. We believe in that. We believe that if a, if a community or a providence is operating based on the principles of an empress or empress or emperor, and that they have no collective rights to elect no one, and that they're under strict orders of a monarchy, then they can, from that monarchy government, they can send their representative that's appointed by the monarchy, the empress or emperor, and send them there to represent the emperor and just become a part of the China Treaty. And rule in a dominion providence. I hope I was helpful answering your question. Islam, thank you. Yes. Troy gone and Mustafa after that. Islam? Troy again? Am I pronouncing it right? Shoygan? Shoygan. 
Thank you, Choi Gan. Please, you know, yes. Thank you, brother. Okay, brother. I I apologize. I am uh, actually trying to get a, a adjusted to my new uh, telephone. I apologize. Um, my question is threefold tonight. I have been uh, for the past uh, for eighteen years uh, watching a growing division within the Moorish American community. And what I have noticed is that we have the Moorish American consulate, we have the Moorish American federal government, and then we have all the leaders who have emerged as the spokesperson for all of us. We have varying degrees of conflict. I was wondering where do we find ourselves as West Republic of Morocco in terms of reaching out to the Moorish American consulate consuls as well as the Moorish American federal national government. That's part one of my question. Part two of my question, I am a school teacher of 18 years. Can I do the one, first one, brother? Can, Please. All right. I, um, I reached out to all the body politics that you mentioned for the meet and greet, which was last week. The emails, we sent the flyer. I uh, sent the flyer out. I emailed or text over uh, 200 people. My, my, I, I mean, emailed to about six, seven, maybe over 100 you know, personally. We, uh, 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 you know, the flyer was uploaded on the United States Public of Morocco's website, Abdullah Bay's website, more Civil Letter website, all those websites. All right. Uh, they have you know, various caucus, caucus members have shared it. But I personally reached out to all the, the body politics that you mentioned. I know them. I know them personally. I speak, spoke to them personally. I, all right. So where are we is that we reached out, you know, we'll continue to reach out. We'll continue to be open. And so that's, you know, so that's, um, that's where we are with that. that we're Thanks so much for to, that clarification. We're open to all the Moorish body politics. As I said, I know, know them personally. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your response. Uh, second one. My second question will be turned into a recommendation for the good of the community. If you allow me to pose it as a statement rather than a question. Go ahead, Go ahead brother. Thank you. Uh, what I would like to do is this, uh, as I review the European community, I came across NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And all of the 30 members of NATO are all Europeans, except, well, they are all Europeans. The United States is included and Canada is included. I have not seen one indigenous nation as part of NATO. Although the NATO alliance has a lot of conflict when it comes to acquiring, colonizing, killing people for the resources of the land. They all agree on that uh, united front. So is there a Moorish American NATO approach to ensure that no matter what our conflicts are, we can work together for the common good of our indigenous people. Did I make any sense with that statement and question? Yes. Um, you made a lot of sense and it's being done right now. The call is being put out. We hear, we talk about a portion of the earth's surface here in the Western hemisphere, which is called Morocco. We don't have to worry about native because the countries that signed a native agreement is already signed the Accra Algeris. NATO, 
They signed an act of Algeris. We don't have to worry about them. They already got an obligation, liability on them. The only problem is that every time they do an agreement convention, Morocco name is there because it's acknowledged as a government. What the problem is, you got selfish, I'm going to say it like this, selfish, greedy, like you said, self-centered, Moors that's claiming to be the sultans under their one government and that all the other governments got to come to them. I'm not going for that. That's the problem. That's the plague that we got. So what we did was, let me, let me say this, and this, he can back me up. I already knew how to send to The Hague and go to the organization of American States. I had a relationship with them through documentation. This man back up what I say. He's seen my paperwork. The only problem is I did not just go down there with a couple group of people and went down and made a deposit and then came back with a group of people and then ratified the treaties then turned around with the intellectual bureau and filed my paperwork. I waited for my people collectively to claim in their providence to be a population as a most provincial government. Then come together on a continent domestically and sign an allegiance under a treaty. Once we do that, that's greater than NATO. NATO. It's greater than that because the countries that signed that is already assigned to the Act of Algeria. Morocco is a, is a signature party to that. We have the treaties with the European nations that all supersede. We go to the World Court now, the treaties will override that agreement because they pre existing. That's a pre existing sovereign power of these political organizations claiming agreement. They couldn't claim that Morocco didn't give them the authority they got. I'm serious. So we need to stop playing games and come and learn how to be a provincial government, create your flag, your seal, your constitution, and then meet us in a convention and sign a treaty among ourselves. That means that treaty would give us the right to operate with sovereignty, the existing sovereignty as descendants, blood pedigree, kinsmanship heirs to these estates in land and waters that's in Morocco under that flag. I hope I answered your questions. Islam, brother. Third Thank question. you. Third I one. like the energy. Thank you so much. Yes. Mustafa, Mustafa. Peace, peace to all the nobles and the lords. Peace to all the Moors that are on the call. I simply wanted to chime in based upon the sisters' uh, concerns about the empire, Washita, Dedug, Demonia. I simply wanted to let you know that personally from mouth to ear that the Empress Verdia C. Tierra Ghostin L. Bay, as well as her granddaughter who holds that seat now as the Empress, I have permission and I am, I am a part of the Imperial Restoration Caucus to speak on the matters as it refers to the Empire Washita de Dugdemonia. We're open, receptive and responsive and we are accepting any progression that the, in the Moorish Imperial Restoration Caucus moves forward in the agenda of completing the Empress work, the Empress Verdia C. Tierra Ghost and El Bay. And with that, I'll yield. Islam, may I chime in here? Uh, Ms. Lam, who is speaking, please? Is that Tamara? We have hands up. We have hands up, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, peace to all the nobles and all the Moors. I just have a question um, uh, concerning the indigenous part of what we're doing and denoting the indigenous part. So we're saying, I just want to get a, a, a clear understanding. We're saying we're Moors. Is that uh, denoting we're indigenous to this land mass? That's, I, I guess that would be a question. And then um, following up with that, if we're saying we're Moors, if we're saying we're Moors and we're indigenous to this land mass, how do we denote uh, our indigenous bloodline to this landmass. 
because the Moorish empires vast and they expanded um, through different land masses. And being a Moor, you were under a jurisdiction. That's a jurisdictional empire, right? And so I can't go to Australia and claim jurisdiction in Australia or claim inalienable rights in Australia, even though Australia is Moorish empire. I can't do that. On this land mass, being indigenous to this land mass, you would have to denote your indigenous bloodline to this land mass. Do you understand? And so being a Moor is not saying you're indigenous to this land mass. Being a Moor is saying you're under the empire or you're under Mohammedan rule or jurisdiction. Now, that's not denoting your indigenous blood rights or blood ties to this land mass, this specific land mass. So being specific, how can we say that we are indigenous and we want to form a government when we are not being specific in what indigenous landmass we are from? We are saying that we are Moors and we're under a Mohammedan order and we are descended from a Mohammedan order, which would be the jurisdiction of the Moorish empire but we are still not denoting what land mass or indigenous land mass that we are tied to. So tying back to the land, how are we able to do that? This will be against, go ahead. Thank you, brother. We are doing that. The how is, we're telling you how. By claiming your Moorish, by saying you're indigenous, Indigenous is not, is not a nationality. It's not a nationality. Indigenous is not a blood pedigree of anybody. By claiming our consequentity, lineage, ancestry, pedigree, national origin, descent, by claiming to be more, we're claiming the existing sovereignty that ruled Phoenicia that ruled what they now known as India, that ruled what is now known as North Africa, South America, Central America. There's are, there are 13 South American, Central America countries that have the Moorish Fairs and Pyramid in their coat of arms. They're making a claim symbology wise but they're not making the claim that they're Moors. They claim to be Peruvians. They claim to be Argentinians. You know, they claim to be, you know, uh, uh, um, Colombians, Dominicans. They're not claiming their Moorish bloodline, though are they, they're preserving that in their national coat of arms, but not publicly claiming it. Because Peruvian is not their blood claim. So by claiming the blood pedigree, we're claiming to be indigenous. Saying you're indigenous is not a pedigree. You're right. And so to make that claim, how do we substantiate that claim? You know, you have to have substance behind that claim. If I, anyone can make a claim, anyone can be under the Mohammedan order. All right. A lot, there was many nations under the empire, many nations under right. the empire. We had many nations, right? So go ahead. All right, let me, let me answer that, brother. Yeah. We're doing it already. We're making the claim. Over five, five, over 500 years, our land has been under European occupation, Portugal, Spain, France, England, the Dutch, European occupation. We are making the claim and what? setting government structure up. We just make the claim and government structure. I think what, all right, which I think what you're experiencing, experiencing brother, is individualism. I, I, I think you don't think this works. I'm sorry, I think. I'm, I'm going there because it's my 27 years observation. Because you haven't seen success only because you see individuals 
individuals, individuals, individuals. So he's like, man, something's not working, right? Because we're talking about setting government structure. That's what you haven't seen. You haven't seen this. You haven't seen a national call to form a central governing body to represent our people, all of our people, and the international community. Reversion to sovereignty, re-entering the international community not as a new state, but as an old and original state. We need a government structure. We need government, government, government structure. I think your question is born out of the lack of successes, the individualism that I yield. Sinai, again. Islam, Islam. Uh, I was just wondering, um, does the prime wazir or um, the wazir of your territory have to be a woman or can they be a combination of both for the wazir and uh, uh, and whoever you elect, whoever you elect. I can't, whoever, whoever you elect, whoever the people, the, the population of voters, whoever the population of voters elect, that, okay. that's the answer. It can't, that has to be the answer. Whoever the population of people elect. Okay. Islam, thank you. you I you. I, iPhone. Islam, Islam, thank you. Um, Question, so, okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm sorry, I apologize earlier. I'm Jeremiah to be uh, from the Napi Hulking territory, um, aka New York. Um, I noticed, okay, so this, this is West, uh, United West Republic of Morocco, and then you have the USA, uh, United, uh, United States Republic, Republic, Republic of America. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, we have, uh, uh, so now, uh, so, 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 oh God, yeah. Anyway, there's different, uh, uh, civic organizations, body, body politics, uh, government bodies, and, um, like, so many, it, I'm wondering if, it, if, if we're going to come together form our own uh, law enforcement division, wash, sheriff, sheriff, uh, things of that nature to where we can uh, uh, be recognized and, 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 and uh, I understand we, I understand we, you know, we have to enforce treaty. I understand that. But as far as our own uh, um, uh, that's what it's, you know, division, uh, militia, uh, I, you know, you have to uh, rise to the more and, and you know, I appreciate what everyone is doing. I, I love and like everything everybody's doing. So getting good recognition. Um, I don't like when, you know, one organization does, does another one. Uh, so far, I'm seeing everybody doing positive things, but it's, it's, it doesn't seem like, with the exception of you guys, is uh, you, this, this, Y'all, y'all bringing everybody together. This is great. Um, but does it look like? I mean, gosh, maybe I'm not structuring my question right. Um, you get your question, brother. Question, please. Question. I mean, as far as us establishing our own militia and, and, and law enforcement division, um, can you see that happening anytime soon, or at all? Under the treaty, under the treaty. All right. All right. Look at the board. Look at the screen, brother. Definition of Morris body politics. Yeah, read that, uh, please. Hey, well, let me turn oh, my light on. Uh, okay, I got it. The inhabitants and descendants 
kinsmen, kinsmanship, heirs of the ancient people of Morocco. Government, pe the people's right to control, direct, and administer their political, civic, and economic affairs uh, through a constitutional structure to rule, command, and order among themselves collectively of a particular region, uh, district, or province in the Moroccan dominion. Province, a region in Morocco where the Moors claim a particular boundary as a uh, pro provincial provincial government. I'm glad you put that up there, brother. I just want to say real quick because I have some words of another more. Thank you. Of yeah. Thank you. Think that this should no longer be referred to as Morocco because that, that, that the Moroccan Empire fell centuries ago. So this should not be claimed or called Morocco anymore, the United States. Uh, well, the, the, the soil here in America. It should not be referred to as Al or, 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 or Morocco. And I disagree with that. But thank you for putting that up because that was confirming that I still can, if I'm understanding it right, refer to this as Morocco. Yes. Yes. All right. James Weeks Bay. Islam, Islam, Kinsman. Uh, with respect to the question that came from the brother that uh, sounds like he's domiciling uh, in Northeast Africa right now, I believe he said Ethiopia or, or traveling. Um, and he talked about the ID cards. Um, I was hoping that uh, somebody could expand on why it's important to legislate what type of uh, instruments we'll use as a part of our political unity. Well, the reason why the parliament that's elected by the people has the right to legislate, because when you're traveling, they're making that decision based on pre-existing treaties and agreements. And in the treaty, it just breaks up the word passport, it breaks up papers, and it brings up flag. Now, documents, traveling documents, fall on that scenario, mean that if you say you're from a provincial tribe or government, then that government is supposed to stand behind and verify you being a national of that provincial government. Now, the reason why that is done, because anyone can go around here and create an ID card, which you, profess, matter of fact, I'm gonna let Professor Abdu explain this ID thing, but let me finish. The reason why a government had power to uh, legislate that, because that power was granted to them by the people through an election. And any time a disturbance that come happen among the among the nation domestically, in having relationship with their own agencies and ministries, then if it's a conflict, then they have to legislate law to hold the agency or ministry obligated to accept and res and honor the ID identity of these people because the government is the one issuing the cards. So by the government issuing them, the government is standing behind and for faith and credit on what? On that, behind that national, he's part of that government. I hope I answered your question. Can, can I have a second question? Really got a, oh, hand oh. You want to add to that about that? Okay. That's 10 minutes. That We got 10 minutes. So let's, uh, ne next. Uh, next week we're gonna. Next week we're gonna. Um, we're gonna be dealing with the constitutional framework. So we're gonna be dealing with principles of constitutional framework, constitutional principles, governmental principles, but uh, constitutional framework. Okay. Yeah. Well, we best touch this. Best, best touch this subject. So we have to make sure we go over that real. Yeah. Yeah. The principles. Right. Talk principles of constitution. I, yes, I understand. Principles of constitutional construction. That does. Principles of constitutional construction. All right, no, print, that's what we're gonna be, that's, so that's next week. Uh, next question, last question. Question, question, question Abdullah, um, that you can probably answer real quick. Um, is there any books that you might recommend um, for everyone to study, um, like the laws of nations, or um, you know books that we, you know, learning, you know, principles of government. 
Um, so if anybody see this one here, um, Laws of Nations. Yeah, Law of Nations is a good book. Laws of Nations. Well, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna be laying out the um, lessons on constitutional principles. I mean, Law of Nations is a thick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I'll be we'll be coming from that too. But we want to do uh, focusing on something that's some some basic principles of constitutional construction. And I, I agree, with Professor Abdullah. Like Tamara say, I think that if we're going to do that. I'd rather do it on something that's pre-existing, like the uh, United Mexican States and the Air Corps Constitution, because that show you that the Moors. Yes. See, I want to show you how the provincial government is set up by the Mexican, which are Moors, and the Air Corps. So once we know that, the Air Corps is the oldest one. That's probably the oldest dating back one. But also, we can bring it up to modern time and show you that the United Mexican States, they come together and form a constitution. So... If they can form a constitution and preserve their sovereignty as a Moor in Morocco, we got to do it. Anything else? Uh, what I'm, what we're gonna, we'll deal with that. We want to focus like on some principles as we go through the Iroquois Constitution, the Mexican Constitution, is the, that we point out the principles of constitutional construction. You know, legislative body. You know, executive. You know, power, let us say the power. You know, the the term word vested. What does vested mean? You know, uh, you have appointment power. So we, you know, so those. So we're gonna, you know, so we'll be prepared to deal with constitutional. Uh, what what is an what is an officer? What is an official? You know, you know. Um, Yeah, not to mix a foreign jurisdiction in your constitution. Right. So yeah, so we will, so we'll, so we'll be, we'll be prepared uh, for constitutional principles. <coughs> who, who, who's that? Yahudi Bay. Last question. Islam, peace, peace, peace. Um. I just had, I had the same sort of the similar question. Um, and I would like for you to speak on uh, when, we're, when we're speaking about the travel documents and uh, as Brother Shem uh, addressed about the government um, standing behind their nationals um, uh, as, as uh, in a sense, like responsible for any of the um, violations that the national may uh, indulge into on another nation's soil. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering if I was seeing this right. And at the, at the current condition that we are in, in uh, as the nation, being that there is not a Sultan, um, President Amir uh, at the head of our movement at the current time, with, is, that limit, is that limiting us in regards to um, being able to um, demonstrate our independency, which would which would grant us the opportunity and recognition from other nations on behalf of when we're trying to issue uh, travel documents and travel abroad. Am I seeing that right. properly? Let me let me answer that, brother. The, um, both part. The sovereignty of the people. The sovereign, the more sovereignty belongs to the Moors. We have the inherent birthright based on our consanguinity to, ex to claim and exercise the existing Moorish sovereignty that Moorish emperors, empress, bays and days and caliphs once exercised. We don't have to have by an emperor, though if we want to do that, but that's, um, that's our power, the decision-making power to do that, all right? So let's, let's talk big to the document. It's not so much the document, please hear me. Everyone who's listening, the sound of my voice, please hear me. It's not the document. 
It's not the documents. It's not the documents. It's government structure. If I can get you just to focus on government structure, by government, through government structure, we can reestablish diplomatic relations. We can enforce the treaties. It's not the documents. It's the lack of government structure. Government structure is the key. Government to government relations. That's what's lacking. It's not the document. That I yield. Thanks, peace. All right. So we're going to close out. So we'll see you next week at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for constitutional principles, constitutional governmental principles. All right. Constitutional, continue with constitutional government principles. We get down to specifics on constitutional construction based on by principle. All right. So we'll see you next week. Thank you again. Islam. All right. Islam. Islam. Thank you. Islam. Thank you. Islam. 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 Peace and love, y'all. Much gratitude. Islam.